Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 2023 fan film Spider-Man Lotus. Now, before we get around to sharing more of my thoughts on this film, I would like to give a special shout out to John for requesting this review. And if there's another film, TV show, or topic that you would like to see me discuss in the future, feel free to donate to either my PayPal or to my Patreon. The link to both is in the video description down below, and I will try to get to your request as soon as I possibly can. Now, Spider-Man Lotus is a film that I saw some reviews of prior to even watching the movie, and I remember reading a lot of the commentary about the film from uh, Spider-Man fans and from other uh, fans of Marvel and just seeing this film get a lot of hate and get dragged and considered to be one of the worst films that they saw from 2023 and one of the worst comic book films ever made for some people. They were saying things along the lines that it's the worst comic book movie they've ever seen. It's the worst Spider-Man film. It's the worst fan film. And after seeing the movie, I'm like, I think it's a bit hyperbolic. I, I don't think it's a good film by any means. I think it's definitely below average. But for me, it's more of a forgettable movie than anything else. Like, it's not something that I'm like, cheering for or i'm gonna stand in its corner and and defend it from all comers not at all like it's not that good of a movie but as a fan film i i, I thought it had some elements and some aspects of it that were actually pretty decent i think a lot of the vitriol is due to the fact that there was uh, some text and some other things that leaked involving the film's director and the film's star and their behavior and their actions off camera that has led to a lot of the ex most extreme reactions towards this film. It's one of those things where, well, these people are a bunch of a-holes, so we are, 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 are going to look at the film that they put so much into and just completely dunk on it and say that it's the worst ever because we think that these people involved with it are the worst ever. That's kind of what I, I, I am getting when it comes to the vibe from a lot of the, the harshest criticisms and critiques of this movie. It's directed by Gavin J. Konop and he also uh, uh, wrote the film along with Sean Thomas Reed and Warden Wayne and Gavin is a is a he's a guy that is a kind of Spider-Man fan who thinks that they know best. You know, he knows better than any of those writers at Marvel who are doing the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. They think that Spider-Man is all fun and games and jokes and ha-has. I'll show them. Spider-Man is serious. That's the kind of uh, um, filmmaker and writer that Gavin is. And in some respects, Spider-Man is serious. There are some genuinely serious and compelling uh, dramatic arcs in, in Spider-Man comics. So he's not entirely completely off the mark when it comes to that perspective. And in some ways, this film showing that is kind of refreshing, but it's not executed very well. But one thing that is executed decently i think is honestly the direction for a fan film i thought it had some pretty competent direction in it i don't really agree with a lot of the criticism saying that his direction is terrible and completely awful and no good i think there's some good framing at times i think when it comes to the few action bits that are there i thought they were shot decently well there's some moments where yeah you can tell that it's shot with a camera phone or the lighting isn't the best. This is a fan film shot by a relative amateur filmmaker. Like this isn't uh, a, a big budget production. It isn't a movie that's shot and, and produced 
at a major film studio. Like this is a guy who just got some money that he crowdfunded and decided to make a movie. That's really what it is. It's it's a glorified uh student uh film. You know, the kind of thing that you would see uh put together by a, a student at a film school. Like it's that kind of thing. And since I've been to film school, I've seen way worse direction from amateur filmmakers than what I saw here uh, from Gavin with uh, Spider-Man Lotus. That being said, there are some shots where he lingers on certain things a little bit too long, like Harry walking down the street in New York at night, or some of the other uh, scenes with characters walling ar wallowing around in their own misery and some of the uh, flashback scenes, especially with the goblins, some of the shot selection is a bit off and kind of wonky. So, yeah, the direction is not perfect. It's not what I would consider to be great or particularly inspired, but it's not completely, totally incompetent either. Like, I, I, I could see some shots here that are actually pretty well designed from a directorial standpoint. The script, though, by Gavin and, and and company, that's really where this film doesn't stick. The concept and the idea of having a film that focuses more on the drama surrounding Spider-Man and um, his uh, friends and his family and their lives is not necessarily a bad idea in theory. But in execution, it just comes across so sloppy and so clunky and off kilter most of the time because of how things are structured uh, with uh, the film's uh, script. It starts off strong, like the first five minutes with Spider-Man just fighting the Shocker and his gang is actually fun. It's got some witty lines of dialogue. It's a decent action sequence. It's a good way to... Uh, introduce the audience to spider-man and his elements but then after that it just really starts to become a slog because so much of it is just inner monologuing from peter where he's talking about his emotions but it's not real time so he's just like talking about his emotions uh at that uh particular moment from the perspective of uh peter in the future after Gwen is already dead. And so it just makes things very awkward in terms of his inner monologue. And yeah, I know in the comics there were a, a fair amount of inner monologues when it comes to Peter, but here it just seems like it's a bit too excessive. And yeah, it just becomes the equivalent of a boring CW teen drama, but with Spider-Man characters. It's like... Riverdale, but with uh, Peter Parker and, uh, and Mary Jane and Gwen Stacy and Harry Osborn as the main characters. And the mopiness, the angst, it just gets old really quick. It really does. Uh, if it's not Peter being angsty and, and being emotional and pushing away his friends, it's Harry uh, and I get it. Peter is upset because uh, Gwen is dead. That's not really something that needs to be such a significant focus of this story. It's fine to discuss that. It's fine to uh, put a spotlight on that. But it doesn't need to be like the main crux of the story. Because that's really what it feels like. The main crux of Spider-Man Lotus is just... Peter feeling sad about Gwen Stacy and that's that's really about it and it's about him overcoming his grief and moving forward from that there's not enough material with that concept for an hour and 40 minute movie and it really does show because things get very played out and very stretched out and just become very thin in terms of uh, the storytelling and it wears <laughs> very thin when it comes to your patience 
because it, it, it's just something that really just starts to get annoying because of how much it just focuses way too uh, often on the the angst and the emotion that these characters are feeling. And despite all of that, there are some moments that I think are kind of decent. Like, despite the way that things were uh, shot with the, the Goblin flashback, when Goblin uh, takes out Gwen uh, and... Spider-Man tries to save her, but Gwen dies, and then Goblin uh, blames uh, Spider-Man for her death. If it wasn't for the kind of laughable-looking Goblin uh, costume and the fact that the audio doesn't match uh, <laughs> the lips that are moving, um, that might be a pretty decent scene because the dialogue in that scene isn't really that bad from goblin and just the idea of peter getting fed up and just beating the ever-loving crap out of the goblin after the goblin is just playing all these mind games with him after gwen is dead like that's some effective drama and i also feel that the scene that is much maligned involving spider-man and the sick kid i think that scene in theory is not a bad idea at all i think it's a good way to get peter to put things back into perspective and get him to break out of his uh shell of misery and move forward and remember you know what's important and, and why he's spider-man and why he can't quit why he can't just quit being spider-man because he's sad over the loss of gwen stacy that the stakes are higher than what he might initially think that he can't just turn his back on being spider-man and this is what I'm talking about when it comes to sloppy execution, when it comes to this script. This scene starts off really strong with Spider-Man showing up to the kid's uh, place and hanging out with the kid, making the kid happy, listening to the kid, and hearing him share his admiration for, for uh, Spider-Man and everything that Spider-Man has done and everything that he stands for and th there's some really good moments of genuine heart in that scene at least at the beginning of it but then when he starts to trauma dump on the kid and he says he's not a hero and that he killed the girl and he's to blame for the death of Gwen and walks out on the kid it's over dramatic and it just comes across like things went from zero to 100. And I get that people who are dealing with trauma, that kind of is how things actually happen. Where if somebody mentions something that's traumatic to you, which the kid did, the kid meant everything was going fine with Spider-Man and the kid until the kid mentioned what happened to that girl uh, at the warehouse. And then that just dredged up all these memories and all these feelings and emotions that Peter was dealing with. And then he just uh, unleashed them upon this kid. And in some way, I kind of don't mind the idea of Peter doing that because it makes him more human. It, 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 it makes Peter into someone that the audience can connect with and relate to a little bit more, but it was just not executed properly. Like it didn't have the proper build up to that. It was just, Oh, everything's fine. Oh, you mentioned the, 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 the girl who died at the warehouse. I'm just going to trauma dump on you now. Like it should have been like a little bit more of a build up. Like the kid mentions that. And then Peter's taken aback by it. And he, he, still tries to focus on the task at hand to to make the kids day and 
you know, try to do some stuff with a kid and focus on the video game that he, that he's playing. And then maybe while he's playing the game, something reminds him of Gwen and that, that leads him to having this outburst. And then because he feels ashamed uh, for doing that, he heads out and leaves. But the next shot could be something along the lines of him on the roof and he's contemplating his actions, and he's also thinking about, you know, whether or not he should be Spider-Man anymore, and then once he gets past the the grief over the loss of Gwen, and Goblin blaming him for her death despite him trying to save her, he then remembers what happened with his Uncle Ben. He remembers that he didn't stop that guy when he could have, who was a uh, 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 robbing the place and if he just put his foot out and tripped the guy uh, then his uncle would still be alive and he remembers his uncle's words you know with great power comes great responsibility all of that starts coming back to Peter and then he has that realization that I can't I can't turn back on on the kid or or my city or my responsibility because the last time I did that, I lost my Uncle Ben. And if I do this, I'm just going to lose more people. It's not just going to be Gwen. More people are going to suffer. So I have to continue. I have to be Spider-Man. And so that leads him to going back to the kid's room. And that's where he apologizes to the kid. And he looks at the scrapbook and he does all of that and says... You know, I'll be in the neighborhood and says to the kid, you know, I, I'll, I will be there for you. If you need me, just give me a call. But the way that it's executed, he just comes across like a mopey uh, character that's just too uh, uh, caught up in uh, the throes of Mopeville. And it just comes across as really annoying and not as relatable. And then when he has to get broken out of that by the kid's mom who takes him aside and tells him, hey, you know, what What are you doing? Like, the kid looks up to you. Like, so what if you're you're not exactly what he thinks you are? Uh, you, you still have to be there for him. Like, that whole bit just came across as very forced. Just have Peter come to that realization himself. He's capable of that. He's shown that in the comics. This These writers are supposedly such big fans of the comics, and they, they think Peter can't come to that realization on his own. And that's what makes that scene so frustrating, because it's so sloppy and so poorly done. Like the it, Just don't have him trauma dump on the poor kid, especially the way that it's set up. Like, maybe you'll have some moments where he kind of lashes out. But like I said, you have a build-up to that. And then you have Peter realizing that he was in the wrong on his own. And then he uh, decides to make it up to the kid. And you don't necessarily have to have him show his identity either. That's like one step too far that's not necessary. And you also don't need to have a scene directly after where Spider-Man's at the grave of Gwen Stacy. And he's talking about... Uh, uh, Gwen's death and he's talking about the kid and he's talking about how it's inspired him to continue to to to, to be Spider-Man and, and, and to continue uh, this path in life and then show the kid's gravestone it's like that's just that's off too like you didn't need to do that either um, and that whole moment at, at the graves uh at the grave you know at the at the graveyard like that felt like that was a climactic moment like with the way that that peter was talking about things it seemed like that was the light bulb moment that was the moment where he realized that he can't continue to be uh trapped and and stuck in this web of grief over the loss of gwen i, I he has to move on 
And it seems like, okay, that's a good end point. But then the movie just continues on for like 20 more minutes. And that's just an example of just how sloppy this script is again. Like, if you're going to have that kind of speech, save that for later. Like, have the scene where Peter makes up to MJ and Harry uh, pretty soon after he uh, makes things right with the kid. Because that's what makes him realize... I've got to go and make things right with my friends. Uh, and he does that. And then you have the, the speech about Gwen and her death and how much he's going to miss her, but he's got to keep on going and talks about uh, uh, Tim and then goes on and, and decides I'm still going to be Spider-Man. And then you get like the scene where he goes to, uh, uh, the party for Flash Thompson, but instead of him like standing outside the 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 window of the venue and just looking at everybody and then deciding to dip because he hears some sirens, he actually goes in and and says hi and and spends a little bit of time, but then the 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 sirens get louder. He sees more cop cars go by and. Maybe here's an expl that you hear an explosion and then he's like, Oh, I'm so sorry. Like I've got to go. Uh, I just got a call from the bugle. Something is going on right now. I got to be there to, to take photos. Uh, good luck flash. Uh, and I hope you make it home safe, you know, something like that. But instead he just dips, he just ducks everybody and just goes, goes to, uh, um, uh, take care of whatever it is that's happening. Like, that just made Peter look like an asshole. So like it did, it made him look like he didn't really learn much of anything. So like that, that's just a bad bit of writing. And there's a lot of that. There's this stuff with Harry being depressed and sad and crying and whatever. Like we don't need any of that. It, it's almost to the point where it's like the writers of this film were the same people who write emo posts on Tumblr. Like that's really the kind of vibe that I got from this script. And it's not, it was never really necessary most of the time. And it didn't really add a whole lot to the movie except just make it more irritating and a hell of a lot longer than it needed to be. And yeah, like I said, things are just jumbled by the end. You have the stuff with, uh, the kid, the sick kid, and then the, the scene at the graveyard, and then Peter uh, talking about his thoughts about Gwen yet again, but this time to a tape recorder, and then MJ shows up, and he apologizes to her, and they make up, and then uh, he goes to the party, and then it's like, oh, wait, no, I can't. Something's going down. I gotta be Spider-Man. And then, and, and then it just ends. Like, it doesn't even really seem like it ends at a good point. It just stops. So it's not satisfying in that regard either. And there's pieces there where you can make it a satisfying ending. Like I said, move the, the graveyard scene closer to the end. Uh, and maybe move the shocker scene later. Maybe move that to the climax. And maybe have more moments with Goblin and Gwen earlier on. Like, honestly, this whole story should have been like 45 minutes tops. And here's how I would have done it. I would have started out the film with uh, Peter, Gwen, MJ, and Harry spending time together one night, having a good time, establishing that they're really close friends. None of the monologue is not needed. And then you have the scene where Peter, he's going to propose to Gwen, but then Goblin shows up on his glider and grabs Gwen and, and takes her away. And then right imme immediately at that moment, you are just thrown into the action. And, and, and there's already tension because now Gwen is taken away and you know Peter's feelings for her because he was going to propose to her, but now Goblin is just screwing that all up. And so then he chases after Goblin and finds him at the warehouse, the same warehouse that his Uncle Ben, uh, uh, well, not really his Uncle Ben died at, but the same warehouse where he tracked down the guy who killed his Uncle Ben and maybe have a bit of a flashback where he sees the warehouse and then he's like, wait a second, this this is where 
I I I I I got revenge for my uncle Ben's uh death. This is where I truly started to become Spider-Man. What is going on here? And then he goes into the warehouse and Goblin is taunting him and then Goblin heads up to the to uh you know the the roof where he flies his glider up over uh, the roof you know up high in the sky he's got Gwen in one hand and Spider-Man is up there and he's trying to tell Goblin to put her down and Goblin lets her go and then Spider-Man tries to save her and then you have the thing where he's too late and she she dies and then Goblin continues to just torment Spider-Man and then tells him that he's to blame for her death and just twists the knife even further. And then that weakens Spider-Man. It makes him distracted. And so Goblin takes advantage of that and throws a bunch of pumpkin bombs at him and just beats the crap out of Spidey. And looks like Spidey's a goner, but then Goblin just cannot stop messing with spider-man he cannot stop messing with peter he keeps blaming him solely for the death of gwen and that just completely uh just sets peter off and then he just essentially hulks up and just kicks everyone crap out of goblin in satisfying fashion just punches him like just repeatedly you know like when uh, rocky beat the crap out of clubber lang in the in the rematch at the end of rocky three just just boom 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 and leaves him there and the 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 fire has gotten out of control in the warehouse now and he just leaves goblin to die and gets out of the warehouse just before the the warehouse just completely gets engulfed in flames and crumbles and just falls completely apart and after that scene you transition to uh uh peter and and his friends mourning gwen mourning her death going to the funeral those kind of things and then you have like a series of sequences of peter dealing with gwen's death dealing with uh those memories of being with gwen finding the old photos and old videos and and being sad and having moments where he's pushing his friends away from him because he's in a bad spot because of Gwen's death. He's so wrapped up in this. He's decided to stop being Spider-Man because he doesn't want to hurt anyone else. And so you have like some scenes of the city of New York and crime is running rampant again. And, and you got newspaper uh, clippings that are asking, where is Spider-Man? And why has he turned his back on on the city? Uh, and then MJ brings Peter the letter from the sick kid. And then that's what makes Peter reconsider things. And then he puts the suit back on, goes to visit the kid. Then things play out the way that I mentioned where it starts off good. But then the kid mentions Gwen and then he has a hard time. Uh, staying focused and and lashes out on the kid a little bit but then after he thinks about it some more he he realizes that was wrong i need to make it up to the kid and i also need to make it up to my city i can't turn my back on my city i can't turn my back on my friends i have to be spider-man and he does that and goes back to the kid makes things up with the kid and then he makes uh, up with his friends and apologizes and and they accept his apology. Uh, MJ gives him the invite to uh, Flash Thompson's party. He goes to Flash Thompson's party, but then things start to go down uh, outside and then he suits up again. And then maybe that's where you have the shocker confrontation. That's where the shocker fight happens. And then the last scene in the film is Spider-Man swinging towards the camera, doing his web slinging, doing the acrobatics with with a, a monologue uh, where he's talking about, you know, I, I miss Gwen and she'll always be in my heart. But with great power comes great responsibility. And it's my responsibility to my friends and to my family and to my city 
to be there to 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 always be the amazing spider-man like something like that like that that's a good way to end things and it's not dragged out with people being mopey and overly emotional and angsty and to the point where it's absolute cringe so that's that's how i would have handled it i think this film would have played out a lot better if it was something along those lines instead of this overlong vanity project now I also want to mention that for a fan film that I think only costs like a, over a hundred thousand dollars, I think there are some pretty decent production values when it comes to the scenes with Spider-Man. There is a, some moments of the CGI, especially early on where it looks a little like PS three PS two kind of level in terms of the graphics, but I'm willing to give it, a, a, a pass because it is a fan film and despite that there are some moments in this movie when it comes to the visual effects that look like something on par with what you would have seen in a disney marvel spider-man movie and i want to give the the effects artists and the people who worked on the film in that regard credit for that i also think it's got some good costume design i think the costume that Spider-Man wears in this looks pretty good and has a good look to it. And yeah, I, I think from an aesthetic standpoint, when it comes to the visuals, like this is not that bad of a film when you're just looking at it from that perspective. Uh, the Goblin costume, that's a little bit off, but Goblin's are always a character that's kind of hard to really nail in live action because of just how it's a guy wearing a goblin mask. So I'm not going to be super hard on the film for that, but yeah, I think I do. I think it's got some pretty decent production values overall. Now, moving on to other aspects of the film, the cast, I get why people are hard on them, but I think for a lot of amateur actors and actresses, the performances weren't completely awful. Like, Warden Wayne as Peter, the guy's kind of a dick in real life. But the performance, I didn't think, was that terrible. Like, honestly, I thought it was okay, but I think he imitated Tom Cruise way too much. Like, you're not Tom Cruise. Find your own acting style, man. Uh, Sean Thomas Reed, I thought he was one of the weaker performers as Harry Osborn. Pretty bad performance, especially when he was trying to be angsty and emotional. Uh, Mariah Brooklyn is Mary Jane. I thought she was actually pretty good. I thought it was actually a pretty authentic performance. I, I honestly even think she did a better job than Kirsten Dunst in the actual Sony Spider-Man films with Tobey Maguire. Uh, Tuen Powell is Gwen Stacy. I also thought she was pretty good. Um, Maxwell Fox Andrews as Tim. I thought he did a great job. Uh, even Jack Wooten as Flash Thompson. I thought he... He did a, a solid job, too, when it comes to, like, the few scenes that he was in. So when it comes to, like, amateur performers, like, yeah, it's not Oscar worthy, but I didn't think it was completely garbage either. But that's just me. Uh, and the cinematography by Tristan Lawrence and the editing by Gavin, who also edited the film. Cinematography at times is actually pretty nice, especially when it comes to some of the shots of the city. Uh, the editing, though, at times the transitions are really good, but then there's other times where it's just a little too overly ambitious and showy, and it, it just makes things kind of a little bit silly. Um, but I do appreciate the thought process behind some of the edits. It makes the film more interesting visually. When he's using a combination of black and white with color, or... There are scenes where he'll transition from one scene to the next with like a flashback or, or a memory or some of this other stuff. Like I appreciate the thought process. I appreciate the effort, but it's not always in the right place. So sometimes it's a bit misguided and the music, not really a big fan of, except for the few moments where it seems like it just is doing an epic instrumental version of the nineties Spider-Man cartoon <laughs> theme which i don't mind that because I, I i really like that show um 
but a lot of the other original songs they used for this they they were pretty emo and pretty bad and hard to listen to but yeah it, it's a film that it's not great it's not the best thing out there it's not even one of the best spider-man fan films there are other spider-man fan films that are a lot better than this but considering the fact that going into this i heard so many people talking about how it's the worst thing ever it's the worst spider-man fan film it's the worst spider-man movie i've ever seen it just wasn't really on that level to me but it still wasn't what i would call a good film let alone a movie i really have any desire to watch again because it's just so sloppy and just so uh uh i wouldn't say completely incompetent but there just are too many moments where the writer doesn't even follow basic rules of screenwriting and there's not really a whole lot there like it's just very bare when it comes to anything of real substance when it comes to the story it seems to substitute emotion and characters being sad as the film story being deep or having any sort of real subtext or genuine substance behind it and that's that's not really something that to me personally is actually any of the things that the writer or the director is thinking that this film is providing uh, i will take the mcu spider-man films as flawed as they are over this uh, the Amazing Spider-Man 2 runs circles around this movie. Uh, and honestly, even Spider-Man 3 is better than this is. Like, th this is not uh, better than any of those films. So uh, I, I think uh, th the writer and director failed when it comes to that. Trying to do the whole, I'll show you. I'll show you how to make a Spider-Man movie. I don't think he really succeeded in that regard. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend this film to anyone unless you're a diehard Spider-Man fan and you have to see like everything Spider-Man related. Or if you're just curious about the, the trailer uh, or, you know, curious about the film based on the trailer. Other than that, I, I, I think this is a hard pass. But anyway, thanks for watching my review of Spider-Man Lotus and until next time, I'll see you later. See ya.